Sure, everything is up and running. Hello, hello and salam, peace lovers and peacemakers. Welcome to Peace Mindedly, a podcast featuring peaceful bridge makers. This is Sarah Jamshidi, your host for today. And this program is a special program for Ramadan. Happy Ramadan, absolutely happy Ramadan. Ramadan is the time of, uh, in, in my opinion, it's a time of remembering God and a time of perhaps staying away from any wrongdoing temptations and and feeling feeling closer to God feeling the God's light within by by practicing what um, it has been uh, prescribed to us which is for this month to staying away from food it's not only food but but uh, any wrongdoings but particularly food uh, by not eating food I, I do believe that we really remember hunger we remember we, we remember those who are suffering from hunger and probably probably be sympathetic towards them and not blaming them for uh, low activities or not activities because food is energy. And when we do not have food, basically we do not have energy. However, um, the Ramadan, I mean, I, I do believe that during the Ramadan, we, at least for, for me, I come to appreciate food and its magical influence on body way, way uh, more and better than any other time. And for that, I, I, I'm, I'm truly appreciative. But um, uh, but uh, he, here's the, here's the thing for for Ramadan when it's happening I really I <laughs> I really would love to put something interesting exciting and at the same time nutritious on the table and uh, my I, I myself look for uh, interesting recipes or interesting book interesting uh, food that I can I can create and for that I am absolutely delighted to know that we do have this amazing book. I'm, I'm going to show you the book. This is um, honestly a very beautiful book. It's called Bilhana. Bilhana, um, whole food recipes from Egypt, Lebanon, and Morocco. And I'm just going to bring the uh, the authors uh, and creators of the book quickly on the uh, on the program. But before I do that, here is what I learned. Bilhana in Arabic means bon appetit. And if you see me on the screen um, on on YouTube, you know that I am wearing my beautiful apron because I I I've been getting ready for for this program. Program. So our guests are sitting together and I am absolutely delighted to have them for our show. Yasmin El Ghorabli introduces her, herself as a self-taught home cook and, and she does have a background in business. She's managing very, I mean, I checked the website. It's absolutely gorgeous website called Cairo Cooking. It's a, um, a sharing platform um, a website that P, uh, cooks share share their recipes and their ideas and advices on, on cooking. I do recommend to check the, uh, the um, there you go, this is Yasmin, to check the um, website. And Shuwekar is Yasmin's um, power sister and some, uh, someone who is um, 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 contributed with her to write this book. Shuwekar is a certified holistic health coach and a culinary nutritionist. Uh, she has completed the Integrated Nutrition Program and the Culinary Nutritional Expert Program at a U.S.-based academy in Cairo. And their friend Yehya El Laili is a, a Egyptian British award winning photographer in her portfolio you can find lots of photos on different industries including food including nature people interiors and all of those and I am so delighted to have you uh, on on peace mindedly welcome Thank, Hi. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. For Absolutely. The Absolutely. Okay, Yasmin. So I am so, I mean, I am so eager to ask this question. And the question is, let's say I've fasted for 18 hours, 19 hours, whatever, and I'm coming to your house and you want to um, give me something. You have prepared something interesting that I can break my my fast. What would be that that kind of food that you, you, you could think of uh, giving me as breaking my my fasting? 
Um, first, I pity you that in Seattle you have to fast for 18 hours. We yes. fast for 14 to 16 max. <laughs> yes, ours, ours, I think this year is 17 hours, um, 50 seconds, yeah. 50 minutes, something like that. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, so we what do you feed you a, a feast? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you start with? Um, we would start with khushef, which is the dried um, fruits, um, uh, fruit salad, but made of dried fruits, uh, prunes and apricots and dates and nuts, um, and it's slow cooked until they're all tender and uh, naturally sweetened with honey. So to give you that extra energy boost uh, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, Excellent. Already, I am. I am hungry. <laughs> and <laughs> you, you fo follow with the soup. Soup. And to what make soup? it nutritious and healthy and wholesome, um, maybe it should be bone broth based, uh, and then a creamy vegetable one. So it's um, hearty for you after all the long after the long day. Excellent. Yasmin, for the soup, do you have the recipe of the soup that you are just um, yes, mentioning have, in the book? Uh, what is the yeah. name and tell me how you cook it? So first we have the bone broth, which is um, either either knuckles or uh, uh, bone marrow that is slow cooked with vegetables uh, and spices. Uh, and then we use the water as a base for as a broth and base for for a lot of soups. Uh, and the soup that we chose today, I think we, I would go for um, a broccoli arugula soup. We're very big on arugula here in the region. Uh, so um, I think if you're uh, w with a good nutritious base of the bone broth and the creaminess of the broccoli uh, when it's uh, whisked into, after it's cooked and the freshness of the arugula, it would be uh, optimal. Excellent. And Shuvekar, what would you think about you know, as a nutrition-based uh, food that I can have after these two delicious, <laughs> absolutely delicious food? Um, since you had the greens already with the broccoli and the arugula, I would go for the ma'luba, which is uh, farika uh, and uh, aubergine and meat. Um, we have it in the book as well. What it's is the name? It's, it's done in a big pot and then flipped upside down and it looks gorgeous after it's flipped. And you have the farike, the, the layer of farike, the layer of meat and the layer of the aubergine. Excellent. The layer of farike, what is farike? Farike is um, the baby uh, wheat. So mm -hmm. it's it's still green. It's still um, um, it's it's more, it has a lot of fibers in it. So it's delicious. It's uh, filling. Um, it's much healthier. It's it's high on, it's high on protein and it's much healthier than, for example, uh, um, white rice. Mm -hmm. I am That's already absolutely absolutely. <laughs> very hungry okay yeah yeah so the the pictures are beautiful i love the pictures and i'm thinking that you know it takes a lot of time to um prepare the food from the beginning to the end and at the end the sisters had you to take a photo of the food so but did, did they let you to eat the food whatsoever <laughs> we ate everything, don't worry about that. <laughs> everything was consumed. And actually, what one of the main uh, things that we want to do is a zero waste. So we almost didn't waste anything from the book. Everything we, we did shoot, we had, we consumed it. Either on the day or later, but everything is consumed. Nothing is uh, thrown away. This is amazing. Yeah, you know what you are saying, I love it. Because... Um, I mean, I'm from Iran, I experienced revolution and the war and scarcity of food in Tehran. And then here, I, this is my, my strategy. My strategy is never waste food. But I cannot e even begin to tell you that how much food we waste in the United States. So for those of us who are waiting, um, wasting food, what is your, what is your advice? 
Do not waste food during shoots. First thing, you have to be ready with everything, with the layout, with the, with the props, with the plating. Uh, a lot of people in this job, they waste a lot of food. Some of the people, they consume, they ask for like six pieces of each thing you're going to shoot. Uh, while the process can be much easier if you check what you need from the beginning. So you don't need to waste six pieces to pick one piece. That, that, that's the main thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, uh, in, in, the sh in the shoot itself, we did not use anything uh, processed or anything that's chemical to make the picture look nicer. So everything was edible and, and natural. Mm -hmm. Any co chemical colors or uh, no oils? sprays, nothing. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, here my daughter and I made a very. It was so delicious. The spice uh, date nuts nut and okay. then we filmed it on on tiktok it's a quick video i'm gonna play the video and come back bear with me for about and she's um promoting her pajama there but bear with me for about <laughs> three minutes okay Lovely. Yeah, since I promised to show you that I am baking this, the spice date and nut cake, I'm doing this, but I am in my pajama, so I'm not showing myself. Now I am, I'm going to just uh, make this one soft and put it here with almond milk and other stuff. Then I'm going to just show, you want me to show you? Yes. Oh, wow. Hello. And then I'm going to um, uh, show you the the latest result, the last result. Okay. Yes. Uh, so Hello. We just pour in like the dates and stuff. Yeah. And I'm doing most of it. Yes. Thanks Actually, you're doing all of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I think got the ingredients. Okay. Yes. We poured all the ingredients and then, yes, and then the batter is so delicious. Yes, that I make it. Yeah, I, I think you should use that. One. I know, I'll even know. Okay, okay. Okay. I don't have the best cook. <laughs> we are both very excited. <laughs> yeah, you are doing great. Yes. We are going to show this uh, to Yasmin and Shwekar that what we did. Okay, so everything is here. Okay. Delicious. Okay, so we have here. And into the oven we go. See you later. And we now, we, we need to just uh, clean up the mess. And wait for the thing to come out. Yes. Hi, so I just want to say, I got new pajamas. <gasps> We're going to get the cake out of the oven now. Look at this beauty. <laughs> yes, okay, I'm taking it. Voila. Oh, let I me mean, keep, keep it. Okay, so this is half and C, and then I can grab this one here, and voila. It's a bit, I, I need to let it to yeah. just, you know, yeah. get it colder. We're gonna cut a slice of this. I am super, super, duper excited. Super, super. Oh my god, this is beauty. Look at this. <laughs> is it good? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just wanted to this show you amazing. what we did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, we made this cake uh, three times so far, oh, and wow. then we are making it again. This is one of our favorite recipes, and then we are thinking about other recipes. But, and I I was thinking that, so do you have any recommendation? I mean, we followed exactly. We followed, we followed all the instructions. We had all of the ingredients. But do you have any recommendation of how to make the cake better? Better? Mm-hmm. Use if you if you have access to fresh black dates rather than the dried. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, fresh what? Tell me again. 
Do you have access to fresh black dates? Uh -huh. yeah, uh, we Not don't. the dried? No. I, I even don't know what that is, fresh black date. Yeah. My, the thing is, the rest, this is, this is um, a, a twist on my grandmother's a black, fresh black dates recipe. Mm -hmm. But to make, to make the recipe healthier and more international, we had to drop the fresh black dates. I see. And make I a see. bit of a change from the sugar to mm -hmm. the molasses or the date molasses. Mm -hmm. um, so to accommodate the, the for the book, yes, it's, it's one of my favorite recipes to be honest. So I yeah, now I do, <laughs> this is how it looks like the black ah, date, the fresh I, ones. Uh huh, uh huh. Very yeah. nice, very so nice. So the way my grandmother does it, if you find the fresh dates, or maybe try try it with the dried. I haven't. Um, on the base of your tray, where you put some oil or something, so for it not to stick. Add a bit of molasses there, and then um, lay the half dates next to each other in a design, a rounded design next to each other, to the inside. So you have a base of dates, and use your hands to press down, and then put the dough over it. So when it comes out and you flip it to the other side, you have dates nicely organized on top, and they're, they're chewy and they're beautiful. Wow, um, the next time, I, I, I do it next time for sure. Um, tell me, uh, Yasmin, tell me about uh, Cairo cooking. Cairo cooking, um, uh, me and my partner Shahden, we started Cairo cooking five years ago as a collaborative platform where people can share recipes. Um, it started off when we as girlfriends, when we got married and had kids and we started asking each other for recipes. Uh, to do for the kids or for, or for the home in general or in the big gatherings and family gatherings. And we realized how much there is a need for that. So we created Cairo Cooking with our own recipes and asked people to join us and add their own. And we try to promote Middle Eastern recipes that are done easier and with a more modern twist. So, mm -hmm. so we take away the stigma from the big recipes that scare you, the grandmother's recipes that scare you and try to make them up to date to how we cook right now and how mm -hmm. a modern wife or a modern ha home home taker with home home taker will, will do it excellent so shuekar what are the major differences between uh, moroccan and lebanese and egyptian i know that you have turkish you don't have a uh, persian or iranian but you have turkish i don't think you do but you have turkish recipes so what are the major differences with among all of those well you know egypt is a melting pot for all these cultures uh egyptian lebanese persian turkish moroccan uh, it's been always uh, the place where to connect all the um, cultures and people from around in the, in the, in the area. Uh, but Egyptian food, the base is, contains, uh, always contains garlic, onion, and tomatoes with yes. some dried coriander with it. And this is a, a, a sauce for any stew, for any... Um, like uh, instead of the pasta sauce in Italy, this is the sauce, for example, for our rice dish. So mm -hmm. uh, this is the, the, the Egyptian, the Lebanese, they cook more with um, olive oil and uh, more uh, of uh, mint leaves and uh, sumac and dips um, um, the molasses of uh, pomegranate. And uh, with Moroccan, they use uh, more of turmeric, ginger, um, um, saffron, uh, cayenne peppers. Uh, so these are the different spices used in, in all these areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you ever made any of these dishes yourself? By myself? No, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife. <laughs> yes. So, which one is your favorite? And I love the the Moroccan uh, lamb pack and uh, the spinach chips. It's so simple, so easy, and so tasty. So it's Moroccan also, what? The so, spinach chips. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Is, go ahead, so uh -huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Since he mentioned the lamb rack, also uh, some of the differences. 
Um, in Morocco and in Lebanon, they eat more of the lamb because, uh, for example, Morocco is more tribal, um, tribal uh, life. Or, or, but we have in Egypt here, we're more of a, a river civilization. Uh, in Lebanon, they have more mountains, so they they um, grow more of lamb and goats and so on. So here in Egypt, we eat more of uh, buffalo meat or cow's meat rather than a lamb. Very good. Um, distinct differences. I love it. Uh, my question is, um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, these are, um, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going back and forth between questions, no. but, uh, but um, they're, they're, they are good pictures. How did you control light? It's about the consistency in all the pictures. Everything is consistent. The lighting is always consistent. It's very soft light. You can use either soft or harsh light. We decided to use soft light so everything looks so natural. Mm -hmm. Soft light, uh, so um, natural light, basically. No, 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 it's a studio lighting. Say it again. It's a studio lighting. There's studio. no natural lighting except for a couple of shots. Excellent. How did El Gorabli sisters found you? <laughs> uh, we're friends. We're friends, old friends. Yeah, old friends. Tell me, in what way? Tell me how you are friends. <laughs> How uh, his her? wife, his uh, wife actually used to go to the same uh, high school like we do. So um, this is one. Yeah, we know his one wife. Thing. One thing. I work in interiors as well, so he he got to photo shoot some of my interior projects. Um, my husband sees uh, Yahya at our sporting club almost every day in the morning. <laughs> Multiple connections. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You base family friends. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, excellent. So please stay put with me. I'm going to come back. You are watching and listening to Peace Mindedly, a podcast featuring peaceful bridge makers. Um, so we are we are talking with uh, Yasmin El Gorabli, Shubhakar El Gorabli, and Yehya uh, El Laili. If um, you're going to forgive my pronunciation. I'm doing great. In my opinion, I'm doing great here. They are the creators of Bilhana. Bilhana in Arabic means uh, bon appetit. And it's a cookbook, beautiful cookbook uh, of recipes from uh, Egypt, Morocco, and, and Lebanon. So in this book, uh, you can find Moroccan lamb shoulder. Shuekar was ju just talking about, and also yeah, you're talking about the um, um, uh, Moroccan uh, ways in which they are more into lamb other than any other um, um, eatable animals. But this is uh, the, 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 the description. I haven't made the dish, but the description of the dish is fantastic. It says that it's the slow cook with detoxing spices filled with with veggies and fruits. Uh, their other favorite uh, dish is the chicken uh, masakhan. Chicken masakhan. Uh, they love uh, its aroma when it is slowly cooked and it's uh, the releasing deliciousness of caramelized onion. And also my favorite and Yasmin's favorite, I just showed you the spiced date and nut cake. That is absolutely delicious. If you're going to make that cake even more delicious, uh, Yasmin was, was telling us that, um, I mean, it just arranged, sort the date on the the bottom of the pan so then when you flip it you're gonna have first gorgeous second um, sweet uh, sweet cake uh, for this reason we have prepared many of the uh, amazing authors and guests to to talk with us about about different uh, topics so Yes, um, Mansour Adayev is the author of uh, Don't Forget Us Here, Lost and Found in Guantanamo. Mansour is an activist, writer, filmmaker, and um, award-winning podcaster. He was detained in Guantanamo with no charges and later for 14 years. And then he was released um, and basically telling, that, that, telling him that he was there by mistake. And uh, we talked with him and his stories. It's 
absolutely heartbreaking and gorgeous story about how he survived in Guantanamo. Ziba Mir Hosseini is a courageous thinker who challenges Islamic patriarchy and wants to establish Islamic feminism. Her new book, Journeys Toward Gender Equality in Islam, talks about solutions of uh, Islamic patriarchy and and uh, and also solution of how to uh, include uh, Muslim and Islamic feminism within the intersection uh, intersectionality um, third wave in in feminism movement Amra Sebek El Rayes survived Bosnia and Herzegovina's uh, genocide against the Muslims and uh, she wrote a non-fiction book it's an award-winning non-fiction book uh, about her survival back in uh, Herzegovina. The book is The Cat I Never Named, a true story of love, war, and survival. We are, we are talking with her for this season. And also, uh, as I mentioned, Dina Eldayev, cookbook writer of Egyptian Flavors, 50 Recipes. We are in uh, lots of Egyptian uh, cooking for this season, and, and I absolutely love it. Her new book has absolutely no photo compared to the books that we are talking about lots of drawings and has been created for the cooks uh, of non-Mediterranean, non-Middle Eastern, mostly American and European cooks who want to um, um, practice some of these be a delicious, delicious um, recipes and dishes. This is Ramadan and this uh, show is a special for Ramadan. For this hour, we're talking with Yasmin and Shubekar El Qurabli and also Yehya El Laili. So I have the sisters here. Yes, Shubekar is a health coach and a nutritionist with a background in interior design. Uh, Yasmin is a recipe developer, a cookbook writer, and also manages this uh, Cairo uh, cooking.com, a platform uh, sharing recipes and um, cooking advices with, uh, with audience. And Yehya is an award-winning photographer based in Cairo. Bilhana Whole Food recipes from Egypt, Lebanon, and Morocco is their food, is their book. So my question is, um, what differentiates your, your uh, book from any other Egyptian cookbook, you think? Who would like to go first? Um, first, um, we, we compiled the recipes that, uh, that we've been eating here in Egypt that have been, that have an influence uh, of the region, uh, but it, it, this book it's most it's all gluten free, sugar free, dairy free, only using wholesome ingredients and no processed foods at all. This is amazing, Shweka. This is amazing. No, pro it's actually I made one of them and I looked through many of the recipes. And this is, I mean, it says protein packed or gluten free or dairy free, and that is a marvelous point you are making. Um, and then um, I'm, I'm wondering. Uh, let's say that uh, Yasmin, I have a, a, a group of American friends in my house, and I want to prepare an Egyptian food that I think they may like. What what would I choose? Why do I choose? There's so many, it's so hard to choose. <laughs> um, I can make you a whole menu out of the book for that. Um, Give me two. We can eat. <laughs> you, you can start off with a bit of mezza where you have uh, different types of hummus, the green hummus with coriander, or, uh, or and then you can move into the herring with the tahini uh, and use it as a dip or a sandwich filler. Um, this is truly Egyptian, the tahini and the herring, the uh, marinated herring mix. Uh, also, you can uh, move into a farika salad, where farika is big in, in Egypt, and then it's, it's done with uh, roasted eggplants, pomegranate seeds, and uh, parsley. Uh, so that's another filling salad, it's a carb-based salad. Um, also, the green salad that is just uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, onions, and parsley is um, uh, is a palate cleaner 
cleanser and um, and also a very refreshing salad. Um, and then you can go into a bigger meals, um, mm -hmm. like for example the sharkaseya, which is originally a Turkish dish that we took from the Turks that used to live uh, that used to live in Egypt and rule Egypt until very recent, um, which is a walnut uh, sauce that you put over uh, uh, chicken and uh, rice, uh, it's, and it's delicious. Also, you can have uh, kofta, which is um, done our way. I know there's the Persian, uh, amazing Persian kofta. We do it a bit with different spices, and we add an egg to it, so it's moist. Mm -hmm. It's also delicious. And in the, in the book, it's done with, um, it's, it's, uh, so it's baked at home, but still we put in this burning coal coal in it so you get the the barbecue feel and, and, and taste in it. Mm -hmm. um, um, awesome, I'm, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm also, I'm boring you. I'm boring you. What I, I wanted to say. Thing. Yeah, go, go, go. There's a vine leaves are usually the rolled vine leaves are usually are very popular in the, in the Levant and in Egypt. Um, so it uh, and it, yes, it takes a lot of time to roll. Uh, so we've done it in a pie format, where you put where, where you put a layer of vine leaves and then a layer of the spice that uh, we put in quinoa here, but you can also uh, put spiced rice, and then another layer of uh, vine leaves, and then you can cook it like a pie, and then slice it like a pie. That's, That's also amazing. A delicious okay, dish. I am. I am. Please don't, don't, <laughs> don't continue. I'm already so hungry. Okay, yeah, yeah. I want to test you right now at this. Right now, I wanted to see which one of the foods that Yasmin were mentioning that you liked the most. Uh, the kofta is very nice. Shakaseya is great. Oh, no, give me more. You cannot say just, you cannot just say kofta is nice. No, no, I want, I want full description. But the, the, the vine leaves is totally different than the ones we had at home. The, the pie thing is, uh, it's a very modern twist on the, on the regular rolled uh, vine leaves. And using quinoa instead of the spiced rice also was uh, different. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's one of the things that we have an edge. That, that's the, the totally different one, out of the box. In the mm -hmm. ingredients and the way of making and the, the method of how you cook it. Um, say it again. Um, say it again. Uh, which one? The vine leaves is totally different than the ones that we have at home. Using quinoa instead of uh, spiced rice, spiced rice, mm -hmm. and instead of pie instead of the rolled uh, vine leaves. So when so you say home, uh, where we are talking about? Which region? Anywhere in the Middle East, vine leaves are rolled. Yes. So. That this is different. The, the, the pie and you layer it in a pie. Yes. And his mother is home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any family home. <laughs> Any family home. Because I remember my grandma used to do this and it was a vine leaf. So then the wrap is different than what I've seen in the book or what yes. Dinah was explaining. So um, in the Persian wrap, it's like a we call it bokche. it's like this one it's like yeah. this here but yeah. uh, in egyptian is roll yes right yes, levant, yes, yes, it is a roll. roll and also mm -hmm. the levant it's rolls mm -hmm. uh -huh. and I think also turkey they roll it as well but how about egyptian is it roll or is it like a roll no roll it's rolled it's roll egyptian is rolled and it's small like a finger uh huh yes 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 but yes. cook differently than the levant yes uh, but in what way so the Levant, they uh, cook it with olive oil and uh, they serve it cold. In Egypt, we serve it hot and it's mainly done with broth and ghee um, and it's served hot. Yeah. And in, in, in Iran, uh, we eat it with yogurt or sour cream. Yeah, we serve yogurt. Same, same here. We serve yogurt next to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we have a recipe for the audience who are watching this, buying the book and making this uh, mm -hmm. sort of a, not very easy, uh, not very easy. But uh, Dinah in, in the program explains how to wrap, wrap the uh, leaves and then may, maybe that's uh, one of the I mean, inspiration of how to do it. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, um, Yahya, do you have any other project uh, coming up for you? 
we have uh, another book is coming soon maybe at ramadan actually it's about uh, from it's, it's a joint venture with the un uh, with the FAO organization with the, the same sisters no, but no, it's, no. it's 50, 50 different recipes from 50 different women. So there is no uh, particular role. Excellent. Yasmin, uh, have one of the recipes yes. done by the same Cairo Cooking has two recipes in it. What is the recipes? What are uh, the we good have, um, we have a We have a moussaka recipe and we have... Um, a biscuit. A, a anise biscuit. Yes, anise biscuit. Excellent. So it's, 50, it's 54 recipes from the 27 government rates of Egypt. Awesome. Okay, which one is your favorite? Oh, there are too many to mention. No, no, no choose, choose one. Yes, means uh, biscuits is my favorite. Excellent. Uh, why is your favorite? Uh, this, the, and I love the Anis biscuit. It's very traditional and nobody's doing it anymore in Egypt. So... Uh, it's my grandmother's recipe as well. Oh, nice. Hooray. Yes. Awesome. I used to awesome. love it as a child. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and there's uh, another one with the, I don't remember the author. It's, it's baked, uh, baked squid. Mm -hmm. It was very nice as well. Yes. Say it again. Baked squid. Mm -hmm. It was very nice, but I don't remember who's the author. Uh, in what way is very nice? How do you feel when you eat it? It's a stuffed squid with uh, with rice. It's different. It's spicy. It's nice. It's different. Then we, we don't do this in the squid in Egypt. The squid's mainly fried or grilled. And I think squid is a bit um, rare to find in that region, isn't it? I'm just making an assumption. No, no it's very common in Egypt. No, it's it's common. Oh, see, I have my own stereotype. But we either we are to... framed. We are framed with the Red Sea and the Mediterranean, okay. so we get all sorts of seafood. Very good. Yasmin, you mentioned that the biscuit is your favorite from your grandma. So what do you think about the biscuit when you are preparing or making the, the food? The thing is, when, when I talk to my grandma about this recipe, she wouldn't remember the measures of the ingredients. So she would say, like, I think put three cups of flour. I think you need this amount of butter. I think, and she she let me be, and I had to test and retest. But she doesn't remember. This is how she bakes or cooks. No measures, no recipe, you know. She, and it's always perfect. And um, the thing is, the smell in the house when you enter her home and you have the smell of these biscuits. Uh, it's very nostalgic for sure and we used to dip them in the hot milk so it was a, a kind of a biscuit party <laughs> i love it biscuit party okay yeah yeah let's say that there is no woman around you <laughs> and you are home and you are absolutely that's okay that's okay i can that's okay so uh, you're coming home and you're very very hungry what is, are you like my husband who has no idea of what to cook or you actually can put something together Excuse and me, feed yourself? Okay, so you are, there is no woman around and you're coming home and you want to feed yourself. What do you cook for yourself? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> what do you, what you, do you order in? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. That's a very tough question. <laughs> do you know how to make omelet? No, I do a lot of things, but not from the book. <laughs> <Can cook. laughs> I, I see, I see. I see. I am I'm teasing you, but yeah. uh, it, it's been a very great conversation. Please stay put with me. Yes, I was teasing Yehia, yeah, yeah, and uh, it's, it's a delightful conversation. Uh, for this hour, we are talking with Yasmin al Gorabli. We talked with for this hour, we talked with Yasmin El Gorabli, Shuwekar El Gorabli, and Yehya El Laili. Uh, the signature for our show, you know that. And, and then, if you are not watching, you go. You need to go to YouTube.com, Peace Mindedly, and watch what I'm doing because I am wearing my favorite apron and um, basically ready to dive into many of these recipes. Uh, I think for this Ramadan, I'm just gonna practice and make many of the Egyptian Egyptian recipes, hopefully, inshallah. Uh, the signature for the show, as 
you know, is to ha have our guests to share something meaningful about peace, about kindness and compassion. We started the show at the height of the pandemic. And then because of my experience uh, um, growing up during war and revolution and then covering war uh, for different international media, I think that this is the way to go when there is too much chaos and too much hardship probably the, the best way is to love and to uh, and to have compassion and kindness towards each other and for that uh, this is uh, how we are closing our shows i would like yasmin shwekar and yehya to tell us what they think or uh, what comes to to their minds or what they want to share with us about peace kindness and compassion who would um, like to go I first? All go, I yes. Of, all I can think of right now is the past two years of the pandemic and how everyone in the world was going through the same thing at the same time, um, losing family members or friends or, uh, or feeling anxious or uh, being stuck at home. Uh, so it's just a reminder that we're all the same. We all go through the same things and we all have our own, uh, the, uh, have the su same sufferings and same fears um, and same family ties. So it's just a reminder of that. So I hope um, that makes us better people and more accepting to each other. Shurekar, you are next. Uh, Islam uh, uh, always uh, promotes unity. Uh, so, um, Food, uh, cooking and sharing food is all about unity as well. So I hope the recipes we've made in the book uh, bring you baraka and blessings to your table and uh, or the food you share with your neighbors or the food you share with the, um, uh, all, the, all your friends and family and uh, uh, people in need. Uh, may they bring, may, may it bring baraka and blessings and love and kindness to your table and to the rest, to the Inshallah. Inshallah. Very good. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah. I, same as Yasmin, after the last two years with the pandemic and everyone staying home and the lockdown and all these days, I think people should appreciate life more. Uh, work on, yeah, to, have, to have a nice life, enjoy life. Life is easy. That's all. Excellent. Thank you very much. I really appreciate being here with me for this conversation. Khoda Hafiz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.